I guess most people are looking at dairying and not through rose-coloured glasses. Well, it's a bit of a downturn, uh, but commodities do have cycles, and the ones who will come through, uh, whether they're long established or new, are those who've been prudent about their planning and uh, and budgeting. Uh, I Two things from my time as a Member of Parliament. Um, I had a farming couple in the Ikamatua area on an old lands and settlement, a lands and survey settlement block. <clears throat> they were the only farming couple on the west coast as I, that I can recall who went through when the subsidies were withdrawn. But they were so great, you know, they, I went to see them and they had no blame for anybody else but themselves because they, they, they knew that the subsidies were artificial, they knew that they'd, they'd taken uh, too big a leap of faith mm. and they're just the sort of guys who I th hope were very successful in, in coming back into the industry later on. Um, and the other example I have uh, about being prudent is when the weather bomb hit South Canterbury in 1986, the Cabinet set up a committee which Geoffrey Palmer chaired, and he reported to us that it was astonishing the high levels of equity which those farmers had. Uh, they, they were canny and careful, and I suspect that it's not like that today. But they were running at 85-90% equity uh, right, almost across the board. And 20, hear, 25 hear, years or 20 years ago 20, 20 years ago I mean you hear some horrendous stories about about the debt loading that some are having I yes. mean it's sort of a very close to three figures yes indeed and um, <clears throat> partly the banks uh, should have perhaps been more careful in in lending but it, it looked pretty good and uh, you know, as the old Warren Buffett saying you you know who's naked when the tide goes out um, <laughs> yes, that is an uh, interesting <laughs> saying and um, from my life earlier as an English teacher the wonderful poem Ode to Autumn by John Keats, um, where he talks about the end of summer, um, but the little buzzy animals and so on around the place have uh, behaved as if warm days will never cease. But warm days do cease. Uh, they come back again, but uh, hopefully as many as possible get through this without having to uh, come down a step, maybe go back into share milking as a percentage farmer, uh, at least in dairying there are those options available, mm. whereas in a lot of other businesses you make some unwise decisions and uh, uh, there's no nowhere else to go except out. People naturally will want to blame somebody and I guess people will blame the banks, but you know, if you're obese because you buy a whole lot of food you can't blame the grocer, can you? No, you can't, no, no, you can't. And, and the blame lies um, in many places, perhaps uh, Fonterra is not into sufficiently into value-added uh, commodities. Uh, um, but markets anticipate events, and once the European Union people looked around the world and thought, well, all these guys are going gang gangbusters producing, and we've got our farmers on, uh, on tight uh, controls and limitations, just the very mention that they were going to withdraw those, immediately no more increase in production but the very mention that their subsidies and their, their production level regimes were going to be amended, that, that affected the market. Yeah, I mean, it's, I like the idea that you're saying go back. You know, I mean, if you're, over, if you're overdone, if you get out, start at the bottom again and come back up. Yeah, I mean, that, that opportunity is there, I think, for, uh, for farmers who've only just got in, who've uh, onto their own, own land, um, with their own herds, they've um, they perhaps borrowed more than they should because they thought that, well, they knew that $8.40 a kilo wasn't ever going to last, but they might have thought that six or five and a half, mm. somewhere around there, but now they're down <laughs> at, at uh, the, the, the mid $4. Um, if, if they have to take a step or two back to become a 25 or 40 or 50 percent uh, share milker, then at least they're, they can get back on they a ladder. Can, they can claw their way yep, back up yep, again. Yep. Foreign ownership, that's, an, that's another one of those subjects we shouldn't probably be talking about, but we're going to. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I... So don't mention the war, isn't it? <laughs> I was the Minister of Immigration in 1986 who <clears throat> introduced the multicultural policy. I think we had 33 migrants from China the year before, and then several hundred after, and, and so it's gone on. From all across the, all across the groups who were not entitled to come to live here before. Um, so, you know, I don't have any issue with multiculturalism and the migration from 
those various countries. I think what the issue has been is that some people in countries like ours, uh, Britain's another example, where wealthy people in other countries see that as a sort of currency hedge where they put money into more stable markets. The classic example in London would be Russian billionaires. They, they buy hugely valuable properties there. So do people from the Middle East, where, because there's political security as well as financial security in uh, Britain, as there is on our own scale in New Zealand. And I just thought that if 40% of the uh, buyers in a particular period of time, three months, whatever it was, uh, people who appear to be from China, uh, whereas the Chinese only make up 9% of the Auckland market, and most of them are actually below the median wage. So they're not the people who are buying the highly valuable houses. I just reckon that that's an issue and it's got to be looked at. We just, um, we wouldn't be able to do that in China. They can't do it in Australia. They've got to build a house if, if you're offshore. You've got to, so, so we've got to be for investment, but as I see it, foreign investment, which only cranks up the price of commodities or, or, or um, products which have already been there, mm. Is not the best sort of investment. We should be looking at investment coming into new, innovative activities which grow our economy, not just buy what's already there. Because our, our dollar and interest rate has been very, very good at making sure that a lot of overseas funds are coming in. Yes. I mean, yep. we, we were more financial than we were production wise at one point. Yeah, I mean, we, we've got a free economy, and, uh, you know, um, when I was in the cabinet, we floated the currency, and now everybody's going around saying, what a great thing this floating currency is because it gives us the, the buffer, it falls um, as adverse events uh, occur and it rises when times, uh, times are better. So uh, I'm, I'm all for that kind of flexibility um, and that, that is a good thing for the economy. I'm a bit confused about, about this, this sort of witch hunt in Auckland at the moment and if you've got a Chinese name I mean, there's Malcolm Ching is a, he is a New Zealander, yes, from, yes, yes. you know, he <clears throat> looks like me. So, yeah, that, that's, was that sort of a publicity stunt or what was behind that? No, well, I, think, I think there is a genuine issue in, in Auckland and the property market with, um, with buyers from offshore who don't intend to live uh, in New Zealand and who um, they might have their kids at school or university down here for a period of time. Um, and then the capital gain when they sell and go, um, that's covered all the university fees or all the tuition fees. Now, at least they've been occupied, but there are places <coughs> there which are being bought by offshore investors which are not occupied. They're just, they're just there because in Auckland last year, prices went up 150000 a year. And uh, so they're buying it, leaving it, and getting the capital gains. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, I, yeah, I can understand that, but it, well, <laughs> it's good if, good if you've got the money to get in there, and and if you can, you know, but we we'll, we we'll, we would not be allowed to do that in China. In fact, we're not allowed to do that in many other countries as well. Mm. You've got to be a mm. citizen or a resident, or, um, or or have some entitlement. Because is there a is there a solution to that Auckland market going up and up and up? Um, it has happened before where it's crashed here. Yeah. It, it reaches a point. Uh, I can recall in the nineties there were places. Um, which had been on the market for three quarters of a million, uh, it's just a run of the mill price now, but they were top of the market then. There was a crash somewhere about 94, 95, and they were then being sold for 350, 370. So it does crash. And Whereas, for no reason, it, it would just seem it has got to the top of the market and then boom. Just gets to the, yeah, that's right, yeah, just um, like all commodity cycles, or, and housing is a commodity, but. Um, Normally housing is better, and for most of the New Zealand, it, it's fine. I mean, the, the, it wobbles sometimes, but generally it, 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 it increases in value more slowly, but consistently. But Auckland does tend to rise and, and yeah. fall. Have we got the, the, the rural farming ownership sorted out for foreign owners? Um, I don't know. That'll be a matter of ongoing political debate, I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, um, where, where a foreign buyer can add value, uh, to New Zealand's basic infrastructure, and industrial and commercial infrastructure, then, then that should be allowed. Mm. Um, but by adding value, I don't mean <clears throat> buying a house and painting it, and then, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's <laughs> that, not what I mean. That, that, it has, but but yeah. if you can bring new technology, um, I mean, we're allowed to invest in many countries in the business world, but not less so in farming, 
Um, but if there are people offshore who can bring skills and talent and innovation to to New Zealand industries, including agriculture, then then we should be doing that. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, Rob.